Welcome back to Frozen Education, this is Zet. Today I'm going to be talking about TNXP as requested on my Twitter account. So I'm going to go through technical analysis, news and what I think about the stock and my personal rating for myself. At any point if you feel you're missing on the technical analysis, you'll find a playlist in the description below to explain each of these technical indicators and what they mean. Make sure before we start to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow, subscribe and leave your notifications on. Let's jump right into it. So on the MACD here, we get to see on the one month, uh, sorry, on a week, one week uh, interval. We get to see it's actually testing in a negative reversal, although the trend that is currently is uh, possessing on the one week perspective seems to be strong on the ADX. Nothing significant here other than there is a, a potential of a negative reversal on a one week perspective as it has been falling for quite a little. Now on the one month one day perspective we get to see something completely different. We get to see that it actually has confirmed a positive reversal uh, on the 16th and then followed it by the 17th by a strong movement uh, upwards. And that is a really strong indication of uh, a breakout happening. Now, although on the William percent R, that is really close to overbought. So that is a bearish sign. On the ADX, it's sloppy moving sideways. That is bearish. Momentum is very bullish and very strong. Unbalanced volume is very bullish and strong. Volume is bullish and MACD is bullish. So what you have here is one, two, three, four versus two bearish. Now on the moving averages here, what we get to see is that the 30 EMA is above the 10 SMA. Yes, that is bearish, but the stock has gone above the, ne uh, the bearish trading uh, action zone where reverse negative reversals are likely. Uh, 50 SMA and the 200 SMA, the stock price is just about that, and that is amazing. That's a bullish sign. So other than the 30 EMAs being above the 10 SMA, averages look like they have a high potential of being bullish here. Now on the one hour perspective, what we get to see here is as well something very close to reminiscent to the one day perspective um, in fact we get even a positive sign by a golden star forming in around 1 pm that really signals out a potential of another breakthrough or another breakout now that is a very bullish sign moving averages look very bullish it's above the trading action zone where reverses are likely so theoretically if it does dip then actually sees a bounce up 10 sma is above a 30 ema uh, 50 SMA just crossed the 200 SMA and that is the golden star and the price is above both of them. Now one thing on the ADX it suggests that the trend might be a little bit unstable sometime soon and in fact it kind of broke that trend somewhere around 11 a.m. and then formed the golden star so it's kind of a little bit mixed there. William percent R puts this one a little bit around neutral. Momentum is a little bit in the middle. MACD here this is the one concerning is that it's attempting to go negative but this is not the first time though. As you get to see, it has done this one time, two, three, four times. So maybe the fifth time we'll just keep continuing on that kind of trend where it basically rejects a negative reversal. Now, on the moving averages, we get to see the moving average band is expected to trade between 95 cents and 86 cents in the middle and 78 on the bottom, but it hasn't been in that moving average band all the way since July. So I'm not going to give it much mind. Now going on towards Fibonacci retracements and supports and resistances to try to understand better the movement of the stock. So we can get to see that it is breaking that Fibonacci retracements at 99 cents and it has been rejected previously once around um, 27th of August and it's currently sitting just on that as a strong resistance. If it does break that there is potential there. But now just for the sake of the arguments here what are significant supports and resistances other than the 99 cents that is quite important for this one. So of course there's the 99 cents one and then above that we have the 102 and then above that we have the 107 and then the 111 and then we have the 114 and then we have the 117 and then we have the 119 uh, above that. Now about supports here we get to look into different levels of supports the current one sitting would probably be uh, the 97 cent support and then the 96 and then below that we have the 94 and then below that we have the 92 and then below that we have 91 88 80 yeah so 88 and then you have 83 this is a quite significant one and then below that we have the 80 cent one that is a strong one and then we have the 78 76 and the one that is most important is a 74 cent one but as of currently right now it has actually closed that gap that it created as you get to see so after closing the gap it has potential to start recovering now that is a bullish sign now let's take a quick look we into 
um, news here. So looking into news, we get to see a new PR coming in, came in today this morning, uh, which is the webinar to be hosted uh, live. Antibodies versus T cell immunity is a single vaccine enough to stop COVID-19. And this is happening on 20, 24th of September uh, off the Financial Times is being hosted by them. And that looks like it actually might have some amazing impact on the stock. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. next Thursday. So that is quite of an exciting PR to have uh, a week away and you get to see that the market is already enjoying it this morning. Now another one here is this is the form 8k. This is the presentation. This one was just recently yesterday. So I'm going to go through that in a minute. Um, you get to see as well a purchase two weeks ago of around 5,500 shares at around 89 cents and you get to see a lot of these purchases. I'm zooming here just so you can get to see it a lot better. A lot of these purchases are happening in around very close to a dollar value. Um, and that shows in that there is a lot of uh, interest for these people um, in terms of the stock or a lot of belief for the stock to increase. You get to see, for instance, uh, around, let's say, 70,000 shares added at 91 cents, another 3,094, uh, 20,103. 25,000 happened but that was way ago last year 237 but they have a quite high average and then, you know they're buying it directly it's not being granted so that is quite significant for me moving on towards the 8k yep that is the presentation another 8k coming in towards enrolling in the first patient of the Covey logic logic on observational study to assess the antibody and the t-cell response to SARS-CoV-2 the virus that causes COVID-19 and the results from COVID logic study is expected in the first half of 2021 but the enrollment of this first person just a couple of days ago that is positive news now on the tnxp as well they have uh increased the amount of shares uh around let's say 66 sorry 600 shares and around 30 million to be raised uh, from common stock but there is something interesting about this one here and uh, just bear with me even though it does signal perhaps a potential offering in the future and that is a risk to be considered what i do like about this one is fairly as as follows i'm zooming in further so you can actually see if you want to pause in and uh watch uh, and take a quick read and it says here um basically that they're going to be uh if if, if the stock price is above 10 cents they they have the chance to add above 750,000 shares and then going forward if it's not below 75 cents then they have a 1 million shares that they can actually uh, put out and then if the stock price is above a dollar they have around 1.25 uh, million shares to be added and you get to see it's more off that it's better for them if they get a lot of PR to raise their stock price before an offering uh, because they get to offer more shares. And that is a potential for uh, a lot of different PRs. Well, of course, that is a risk where it comes in uh, at some point where they start releasing a lot of PR and a lot of good news coming in that an offering might follow. And that is kind of textbook for a lot of companies. Um, nothing significant in September in terms of institutional buyers. Moving on towards their Twitter account. This year they mentioned uh, the September 24th um, conference that I did mention. And they do cover a lot of other things as well. So it's kind of an interesting one if you're an investor you might want to hold it or you want to follow on there or bookmark it depending on what your preference is. In terms of pipelines I'll cover this one here in a minute uh, on their presentation as they do have uh, the latest updated ones on there. So on their presentation on their pipeline you get to see that they have one two three four five different COVID-19 uh, sorry six to 18 to uh, NX 800 uh, vaccine programs. And so it goes on from the horse box virus vector uh, towards other options with Kansas State University. They're all under preclinical trials, but the TNX 1800 has been the more prioritized one. Uh, other things they have is smallpox, monkeypox, a lot of different uh, immu immunology portfolio, as well as CNS portfolio, including the, uh, the lead program they have for the FM uh, going on to phase three and ongoing. So there is a lot of potential on this one. What I really like about this presentation is that they did something very interesting and I'm going on to the very end. They basically made our job easier to identify upcoming catalysts. You get to see for September 2020, the interim analysis results from TNX 102 SL phase F304 relief study in fibromyalgia expected uh, fourth quarter of 2020, which we're coming into right on 
top line data from TNX 102 SL Phase 3 F304 release study of the same program, small in same quarter, small animal data from TNX 1800 in COVID-19 model expected, which is the COVID-19 one, as well as uh, primate data as well coming in from there. On 2021, which is even further, initiation of phase one safety study of the TNX 1800 for COVID-19 is expected. And the second half is the 102 SL phase three F306 rally study in uh, fibromyalgia, uh, Melgia expected. God, these are hard words to be pronouncing as an engineer. Uh, other thing here, cash and cash equivalent for June 30th. You have, they have around 55 million uh, with a net proceeds from common stock on July 15 was 9.6. So they have quite a bit of cash to be holding on hand. Uh, that is quite significant for us as it signals in there is a less potential of an offering, but it looks like with their previous filings that it might be something where they're considering putting in an offering now we can go towards the 10q again and try to see where uh their kind of burn out or burn through cash um where their accounts are uh but as we get to see from before uh they have around let's say 14 million burning out cash per quarter uh that is an increase from the 5.8 but that leaves them at least for a few quarters ahead what do I think about the stock and where is the move coming in? Now this one is kind of curving up. It looks it looks promising, but if it does break that 99 cent one, I would definitely consider buying it to holding it until perhaps I'd say the dollar 20. This is if you're trading it. If you're investing in this one, um, I would definitely say if it does dip, then you, it's most likely like around the 76 range. Um, that would have been a really nice place to average out. If you were to consider this one here as well for um, trading purposes up until I'd say next Tuesday because here's the thing with conferences usually they're priced in a few days ahead probably say by next Tuesday if you buy sometime today or on uh, sorry on Friday after Friday sell-off uh, you probably you would get decent profits coming in on Tuesday uh, if everything goes into plan but if you're long-term investment on this one it seems that there is a lot of focus on two different medicines here including one of them is COVID-19 but what I like about this one is they're doing a lot of research with the other COVID-19 uh, and you get to see their portfolio is not one COVID-19 vaccine it has a lot of potential so it's definitely for a longer term I'll definitely say a hold uh, in terms of a short-term trading this one can be profitable so I would say it's a buy after Friday sell-off and that is a very important thing because uh, if you do see it and it kind of rejects the 99 cents it might just be a hold and not a buy but if it does break that 99 cents then i would consider it a buy what do you think about this ticker make sure you mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like you have a wonderful day